Hey everybody, Dan and Eddie here from the Deathless Dogs, and we're starting up a new series called Fresh Bottle Friday, which is going to be us, Fresh Bottle Poppin', probably starting bi-weekly to get going, but could possibly turn to weekly later on. We'll see what happens. But basically, these are just going to be quick hit reviews, strictly on flavor, not going to really talk about anything else. It's pretty much just going to be whiskey focused, and we're going to kind of try to get your payday purchases in line, because... You probably just got paid. It's Friday. You're gonna hit the liquor store because I know that's that's always a fun stop. A payday, payday liquor store run. It's always yeah. good. So we're determining if these bottles are something you should be grabbing or something you should pass up. And the first one in the series will be 1792 Sweet Wheat. Sweet Wheat. The wheat will be sweet potentially. I don't know. We've had this one sitting on the shelf for a while. This is also part of the series. Is like. Let's start getting through some of these bottles that we've been sitting around forever that we haven't opened. Out with the old, in with the new. We'll jump into it, 1792. I'll probably put up a graphic right now explaining any type of particulars we know about distiller, mash bill, you know, all that kind of stuff. So we don't have to worry about it. We're, we're flavor focused right now. Yep, flavor focused fresh bottle Fridays. Yeah. Boom. Also known as <laughs> <laughs> fresh bottle popping. Good. Uh, good pop. Good pop. 1792, I feel like, always does. Yeah. It's that strange bottle shape. It's almost like a, you know, like a fishbowl. I've never had the sweet wheat. Nor have I. You poured way more than you needed to. Ah, uh, my bad. I <laughs> always am heavy-handed. Yeah. We're going to take some of that. Here. We're going to save your work day tomorrow. Thank you. It's going to be hot out there. Thank yeah. You. All right. Sure's great. We'll give it the old fancy swirl, get it moving. That nose is kicking, actually. Very different from other 1792s. Like, I love 1792 stuff. I think it's one of the better values. Ooh, I'm getting a little bit of that shredded wheat vibe, though. I'm talking the Kellogg's Orange Box Little Mini Wheats. Frosted or frosted unfrosted? Frosted Mini Wheats. Or yes, frosted? indeed. I can it's see there. It. Yeah, yeah. It is sweet wheat, which I guess would be a frosted mini wheat. Um, Cereal-esque. Still a little bit of that 1792, like, banana-ish Always kind thing. of sweet. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe uh, bready almost, you know, banana bread. Maybe some nuts in it, like walnuts or something, you know? I could get on board with that. But it does have that familiar, almost, like, bitter smell that 1792 has. Right. It's recognizable if you've, if you've drank any 1792 at all, you'll understand right. the smell. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's living there. It's it's different than the other ones because this I think this is the only one that brings in wheat. I think all the other ones are just uh, you know their standard mash bill with different ages on them or the bottled and bond and such. But this is kind of their outlier, I think. Yeah, the smell is very pleasant. There's a little bit of fruitiness in there too. I'd say like maybe some orange zest or something, you know, like a citrus of some kind. Maybe, but I'm getting really that shredded wheat with bananas kind yeah, of thing. I get that. I respect that. All right, let's just dive in. All right. Start drinking. Click them and drink them. That's much smoother than I thought it would be. I was kind of bracing for impact. Yeah. And that's very smooth. Sweet, as they said. It, it comes out quite sweet. Very really does remind me of the mini wheats, you know. Like if you like frosted mini wheats, yeah, maybe a little bit of banana flavor in there too, like the nose. Like the nose smells like what it tastes like, mm -hmm. which is kind of rare for a whiskey, really. Well, I mean, not necessarily like rare, but um, it really is almost like a one-to-one -one comparison. Whereas usually there will be some like outlying things that show up in either side. I feel like this is a pretty harmonious union of nose and taste. I don't think it's the most eventful whiskey I've ever had. Like but there's I, not waves. Yeah, it's not very like complex. It's yeah, it's very I mean. uh, it, it's very straightforward. What you smell is what you get. Kind of liquidy mouthfeel, pretty easy to smash. I think really. Yeah, this would be good in the summer. I mean, you could probably drink it in the winter too. But like, I think that. Overall, it's very smooth, very kind of liquidy. Not not totally, I would say, watery, but like it's one that I think you could accidentally put down like a half a bottle of this and 
Oops. You'd, you probably be, you'd probably be okay, too. It's only 91.2 proof, so it's it's good to go. Um, it does have a decent finish on it, I would say. There is some heat, a little bit of a hug. This bottle was kind of hyped online. People were, like, searching it out and paying way too much for it. You got it at, like, the retail of somewhere in the 30s. Yeah, huh? like low we, 30s. We ripped the sticker off it. It was earlier. $32.99, I believe. All right, we'll call it $32.99. That's a price I would pay for it. Yeah. I don't know that I'd go over 40 for it. And of the 1792s, I don't think it's my favorite. Uh, well, it's different than yeah. the other 1792s. It's off profile from the regular 1792 line. But if you're a big 1792 fan, it's it's worth picking one up to like throw that curveball in there. 1792s kind of always had that uh, dark, chocolatey, cherry type flavor. This strays from that. And mm -hmm. even in color, it's a little bit lighter than a lot of them, you know? Mm. But it drinks very liquidy compared to 1792 other other bottles out there. Yeah. But all said, it's it's kind of refreshing. It's a good change of pace whiskey. Mm -hmm. And and there's some flavors in here that, you know, if you enjoy bananas, if you enjoy Frosted Mini Wings, if you like kind of more cereal-based sweet whiskeys you'll right. probably like this yeah i'd say it's it's got a it's got a pretty unique taste i think it's not a uh not like a maker's clone like other weeders can be like mm -hmm. this is this is its own thing and i think it's it's pretty good i would pay you know in, in the range you paid for it like 35 bucks all day sure 40 bucks i gotta think about it it's not one that like if i see i'm gonna be like oh i need to grab that right you know what i mean yeah but it's good gotcha. and we'll definitely drink it yeah. No, I mean, this is one where if we accidentally just went all day, it'd be gone. Yeah, you have this in a group of, like, four or five people, it's gone. Especially you got some glasses full of ice, like, it's it's over. Yeah. It's, it's over and done. I bet this would be good on ice, you know? Yeah. You sip it in the summertime. Summertime sipper. Bam. So, if you're looking for a summertime sipper with your paycheck, and you see a sweet weed around, I don't know how prevalent it is anymore. I think it's like a limited release, but if you find one sitting on a shelf and these things sound good to you, I'd recommend picking it up. Yeah, absolutely. But that's about it. The inaugural edition of the Fresh Bottle Friday series. Let us know what you think. Are there any bottles you want us to try to find and, you know, Fresh Bottle Pop for you on Fridays? If you are Fresh Bottle Poppin', send in a video. We'll throw you in these videos. That's kind of how we'll do it. And, uh, yeah, like, comment, subscribe, do all those things. Helps us out a ton. From the Western Wisconsin Whiskey Emporium for ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in to the inaugural Fresh Bottle Friday video, and we'll see you next Wednesday. <laughs> we'll, we'll see you at some point.